episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Well, if you notice, um, I don't have a beer in my hand. Neither do and I. You do not have it. So, where did that sound come from? Is, I don't is the know. Real question. I'm divining. Oh, I'm feeling there's it. Other, there my, there's another presence in the room, there's Evan. A, there's a presence, and I'm, I'm sensing it coming. I don't see it yet. Ah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Everyone, welcome on Grace Johnson. She is the winner of the... We did a little... Um, we, we released an Instagram for the Chatty Bros, and so we did a competition, and anyone who tagged... It was tagged a friend, and Grace got chosen for the tarot card reading... And we'll be the first ones to tell you we are like uh, the, the we are not we're experts we're experts we are experts and yeah that's, that's been proven. I'm connected Evan and I have deep spiritual connections we are with all things spirit trust us with your life yeah <laughs> well we are very 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 happy to have Grace on how are you Grace I'm doing so well thanks for having me on I'm super excited and where are you joining us from Grace I'm from Minnesota. Okay, so you're ahead. Ooh. This is a late night for you. This is a yeah, late week night. I I usually stay up pretty late. So <laughs> okay, you're in the future. How is it? It's really it's really nice here. It's great. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's great. still good. <laughs> you got kind of a log cabin it, thing going on. Yeah, you it's very do. nice. Yeah, I I work up north at a camp, um, and so I get like free housing. Oh, so yeah, cool. it's just kind of a little cabin. <laughs> what nice. kind of camp? Is it a ski camp? Um, it's a family camp. It's like a YMCA camp. Um, oh, nice. And they run, they do a lot of stuff in the summer, like typical camp things, but then they also have like just people can come up throughout the fall, winter, and spring or whatever. So beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we are very excited to have you. Um, I think it's time to get into you, understand you, yeah. talk about you. In order for this, in order for this to work properly, we have to have an understanding of you, Grace Johnson. So okay. <laughs> the big, the first things we know is how old are you, Grace? I'm 22. Okay. And are you from Minnesota or did you move to Minnesota? I'm from Minnesota. <laughs> okay. And the most important thing is the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do one card, a very intentional card. So we need to focus on something happening and it cannot be a mundane or trivial aspect. So what we're curious about, Grace, is are there any crossroads coming up in your life, any major decisions, any relationships falling out of line, anything that is normally very static becoming frayed? Are there any, <laughs> or do you have any, do you have Fray, um, that's a good some, one. Job, some job <laughs> shifts coming issues? up? Are there, were there deaths in the family? Are there any new major purchases coming up in your life? Anything you can think of that might be some sort of spiritual upheaval or imba or shake things up for you? Well, I guess, <clears throat> I guess it's not super recent, but like I graduated college last year um, and I studied chemistry and then I had a crisis my last like semester and I'm like, I'm not passionate about this. So mm. were um, you preparing for anything? Were you doing like chem or like organic chemistry? Were you trying like the pre-med route? No, I wasn't. I was actually going to teach chemistry. So okay. I studied wow. chemistry to education um, and I still kind of want to teach, but yeah, I, it was like a, big moment for me. It was like, Oh well, no. Yeah. I don't Last it. semester of senior year after, were you doing it in four years or three years or five, four? four? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a or seven. No, I mean, right at the whatever, finish line, whatever the thing is. Seven, you know yeah. I mean? Becca was what? Seven or eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had, I mean, right at the finish line, you suddenly all of a sudden had um, a little buyer's remorse. Yeah, definitely. So that was, I mean, that's kind of the only thing I can think of. Other than that, like, I don't know, now I'm graduated, like everything's good now. Like, I'm just like, I'm working up here, free housing. It's like going really well. So did that's the only thing I can think of as like, yeah. Did well, you feel like you did that major to please someone else in your life? Like, was there some sort of outside influence that was causing you to pursue that? I will say for question. myself, that was kind of my thing. So like, when I was 18 years old, that's when I really started falling in love with music. And instead of just like moving to LA right away and doing music full time, I did the college thing. And it was just out of this kind of like, you know, societal mixed with upbringing of like, this is what you do. This is what people do. Was there any sort of like... Yeah, Evan was going to be a CPA. Oh. Well, no. 
I mean, not 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 super far off. I studied finance, but not far off. But like, you know, I studied finance and it was cool and all. It was good skill, but like, I, I it was like halfway through. I remember like writing songs on my paper during finals you know realizing like i don't this is not what i like to do Mm -hmm. and so i I walked away like i kind of wish i just four years ago would have just pursued what i love doing was there any of that in your life that made you kind of like i have to do this or so you know whatever i don't think it was like an external force probably more like i really i did like chemistry i still do like chemistry but then as i was able to take more different classes and all that um i kind of just realized like i wasn't passionate about teaching chemistry i'm like if, the, if my students asked, like, why do we have to learn this, Miss Johnson? I would be like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> that, that was kind of where I was at. <laughs> right, that's a good you know? one. It's, it's sure. only like simple if you're going to be a doctor. And, like, the majority of the students you're working with are not going right. to be that. So um, I would say more, like, internal pressure. Once I got on that route, I was just was like, I better keep going. Right. <laughs> so then what... So, so, okay. So you've, you've started to reevaluate some of your passions. What's a major passion that's come out of you discovering that that's not the route you want to go in life? Um, well, honestly, a lot also like some of what affected my little crisis I had, um, was I, well, so like we're from Minnesota or I'm from Mm -hmm. Minnesota. Um, and so just with all the unrest, it was, um, it was kind of that too. Like if I'm working in the cities and like my students are asking, like, why do we have to learn this? And there's like really serious, like racial issues going on that are affecting them. Um, it just felt like really unimportant. Um, so I, I guess, and in my last semester, I took a criminal justice and diversity course. And so that in combination kind of like, just was like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be doing this. So I guess that's something I'm passionate about now. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. (laughs) Have you found yourself pursuing that or looking for avenues to pursue that? Um, well, I've thought about like going back to school and the thing is I would have to go back and like study like social studies. Ooh, Um, this is a wonderful thing. Yeah. We can weigh the commitment of pursuing a new educational course and committing that time and investment, it's fair to say you're at a crossroads in life. You have some decisions to make on like, are you going to pursue these passions sort of at will freely, like in your own time and find opportunity to be engaged maybe on like a local level in your community, like, Mm -hmm. like becoming like, I don't know what do you, not community service, but just becoming more involved with like local access points, like maybe working with some local nonprofits or Finding yeah, some totally. way to well, she's like... she's at a camp right now, right? Well, she's at she's a family a camp right now yeah. for work. But I wonder, is this something you want to work in? Or is it just something you want to be more involved in? Um, I kind of don't know. So I, okay. I would say mm. you're right. You hit it right on the nose that like I'm just at a crossroads. Kind of okay. not really knowing what to do. Yeah. Do you feel anxiety about it? Oh, for sure. Okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> I know what that's like. Let's focus on this anxiety. Do you feel like there's a little ambivalence towards like you you're sort of like you sort of know what you want to do but you're hesitant to commit to something or do you feel like you're not sure if you want to jump all the way in the deep end but maybe like just kind of check out the shallow end a little bit and see if you like that water or like are you feeling hesitant to commit to something again to feel like maybe like you're going to be let down if you if you go to that and then find yourself like years later being like man I did it again I committed to something and now here I am at like 26 and I still don't really know what's going on. Yeah, I can, I can definitely like that. Yes. (laughs) I think in general, I'm like, have the fear of like having a career basically. I don't know. Well, you could move to Los Angeles where 40 is the new 20 (laughs) because I know a lot of people cusping 40 who don't know anything about what their future is going to be like and still haven't figured out what they're going to do with their lives. I still haven't figured it out at all. Like, yeah. honestly, it's like I'm on, I'm on like career four. So don't feel anxiety <laughs> about that, honestly. Um, so, okay. Okay. So it's kind of, is it a little bit of like, okay, I already thought I, w- I knew what I wanted to do and it didn't work out. It's a little bit, of, it, am I going to go through this again? Am I going to choose wrong? Mm-hmm. Is it kind of that thing? Like, I don't want to repeat this feeling of like, I get halfway through or three quarters through and then I'm like, I don't like this either. Or yeah. is it, is that kind of what it is? 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's commitment stuff. It's commitment stuff. I get it. This is highly relatable. Okay, so here's yeah, how we're going to do this because we're on Zoom. I'm glad that we got to this now because now I think there's a lot of our listeners who will who will be able to resonate with a lot of the things that we just discussed. Would you, wouldn't you would you agree, co-diviner oh, yeah. Evan? Oh, yeah. All the time. Okay. My divining bro. So I'm going to start going through the cards like this. We've pre-shuffled. We've spun them around a bunch. So all we're going to do, we don't have to decide an orientation to flip them because they've all been spun around. And you just tell me when you feel like that's a hot card for you. Okay. Okay. I want some of your energy. Yeah, I can okay. feel it. Can you feel I, mine? I feel it. You can kind Put of your feel hand it, out. right? Put your hand out. Okay. We're all in this together. Okay. Tell me when. Tell me when you feel it. Right now. <laughs> okay. Now, do you feel it more as the card underneath this stack or the card right here? The one that your thumb is touching, the one that I this think one. your left hand is touching. Yeah. yeah, this one right here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You have an upright seven of wands. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. We'll describe it for you, for okay. those of you who aren't familiar. Um, it's a man holding a giant staff. And there's little, tr there's little branches with leaves coming off of it. So it's as if the thing is living. And there are six of them stuck into the ground. And he's balanced himself in between all of these. It almost looks like he's fighting a battle. Can I see? Yeah. Okay. 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 Evan, can you read the preliminary description of the Seven card? of wands. This is the... Uh, so this is the seven of uh, wands, wands reversed. reversed. Now, reverse shows that external pressure is weighing you down, leaving you doubting yourself and whether everything is worth it. See? Wow, sentence one. See, Already there's energy. I saw the card. The conversation. I'm you, I saw the card facing you opposite. It may seem as if you are under constant opposition. At first, you could hold firm, but after a relentless battle, you are now exhausted and ready to give up altogether. Don't let this get to you. Even if you are weary, this card urges you to keep fighting for what you believe in. Stand strong, own your position, and don't change who you are just to keep others happy. I wow. mean, and that feels <laughs> like it's speaking directly at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, it also serves as, as a reminder that you will not always win everyone over. There will still be challenges in opposition to your point of view, and you cannot keep everyone happy all the time. Thus, it is time to draw your line in the sand and say, this is who I am and this is what I need right now. There cannot be any compromise or negotiation on th at this stage. Hold your ground with determination and courage. Finally, the seven of wands reversed can appear when you are trying to avoid conflict wherever possible. And as a result, you are backing down from your point of view too easily or too often. As mm. soon as someone challenges or opposes you, you compromise or give in instead of standing up for yourself. Is being accepted and liked by others more important than fighting for what you believe in? Alternatively, you may have tried everything and given it your best shot, but you now see it is not worth the struggle. Even though you might not have made any progress yet, it is time to let this one go and move on. Yes, it may feel like giving up, but in the long run, it will be for the best. Mm. Wow. Do you feel like you've given your best shot? Do you feel like you've given your all into like, this yet? In general? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, so does anything in this last paragraph resonate with you? Or I, I was still more focused on the path ahead. Right. Right. What are your thoughts on, on, that, on that whole chunk? Obviously, like, you know, this is an entire, yeah. you know, small essay. So it's like not every single word, but like in general, did, does that, you feel like you identify with that? Yeah, I do. I think like in the past and like pretty recent past, I've definitely been one to like, back down from my opinions yeah um or like compromise in conversation and yeah just not be like very um strong in my opinions so i feel mm. like that that does that's do how you, I've, I've been in the recent past and so do you find yourself thinking back on conversations and wishing you'd said more or said yeah. something back to somebody mm. yeah definitely yeah i'm like i overanalyze all the time my conversation yeah. it's extremely difficult I think it's like one of the hardest things to learn how to do is to like hold an opposite viewpoint in a public space. Sure. Or to not just go with the flow. I feel like we're like socially bred to do that. It's yeah. like in our DNA to become part of a herd. 
and to stand out and be separate is extremely difficult, but it is something we also praise and honor as a society. Right. Is like the person who does step out of line. Do you feel um, like there's fear of criticism in your next kind of move? Is there a fear of like, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever maybe there might, might not be a specific person, but just in general, do you feel like you'll be criticized for you, whatever your passions are and your kind of possible next steps are? I guess I think that like the criticism piece resonates more, more with me, like personally, yeah. rather than like my career choices. Um, cause like the people I have around me, like I mentioned a little bit are very supportive, supportive of me, but like people that I'm maybe like acquaintances, people that I'm not as close mm, to, I'm mm. like definitely worried about criticism. Mm. So. Yeah. I mean, I like, I also just like the avoiding conflict side of this too. The like, it sounds like put it, yeah, putting yourself second not mm -hmm. getting yourself in front and saying, hey, this is what I want for my life or this is what I want. You're kind of warring with this um, where you sit in your own life. Well, yeah. I really like this part of where it's like, it's leaving you doubting yourself and whether everything is worth it. And then at the end of that, it goes, don't let this get to you. This card urges you to keep fighting for what you believe in, stand strong, own your position, and don't change who you are. Mm. I think that is very sound advice, regardless of a tarot reading for anyone listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there yeah. a feeling of that? Do you feel like you have this, you have these ideas or these passions or whatever, and you feel like kind of giving up on the pursuit of it? Or is it because like because you can also do like a lot of mental gymnastics to where you feel like you've ran you've you've done uh, you've done a lot you've thought about it a lot and the reality is you never even started you know what i mean so that could be the, the get going too which well, is you could have done a mental gymnastics a thousand times and then i now I'm, I'm, I'm so exhausted with the idea of it but in reality is you never actually took the first step yeah no what you just said definitely resonates with me i feel like Cause I'm kind of like, I, like we've been talking about, I'm kind of in a place where I don't really know what I want to do, I'm like indecisive about it. And so, and like, I do have like other passions as well that we haven't talked about, but like that definitely resonates with me. Cause I'm kind of like, haven't really dipped my toe in. Well, you know, one mm. thing you could take stock in is no, we're not one trick ponies. So we mm. can be multifaceted. And while it feels like a bulk of, I don't know, you're only 22. So yeah. <laughs> you have a long road and a long time to figure out or to go to school for multiple re I have friends who are still in school. Yeah. They're just making a career out of it. Yeah. <laughs> but, Cause you that. can, you totally can. <laughs> right. But That's also what they're, saying, it's like, they're just partying. Dude. Why not? Because it's also just like, <laughs> I think the most important thing is like anyone thinking about doing something. I think it's like, it's, it's way braver to just commit and do it than it is to like sit on the sidelines. Mm. You know, it's sort of that thing of like, you can do it like a sport. I like sports analogies, but it's sort of like you can be, you can play or you can kind of support from the side. And it's always more like, you know, you want to be a player. You right. want to get out on the field and at least participate a little bit yeah. and get your feet wet, but not just sit on the sideline and always think about it. Um, so hopefully that pushes you. I'd urge you, you can always get in like softly too. You can always go to community college courses and just see if it's even something you want to get into. There's a lot of pressure in general. You're 22 years old. I mean, take it from like an old guy at this point, it feels like, like 22 years old is like, it's, it's feels, you feel old, right? Cause it's like, Oh, I'm out of college. Or I'm out of that age now. And it's like, I should have it figured out. I should be in my second year or first and you year can party legally. I should, I should have like money in my <laughs> 401k and have like my next seven years like planned out, whatever like that. You could not be more wrong. Like yeah. you literally have so much time ahead of you to just try it all. Yeah. And like, that's the only way to figure out what you like. Cause you're mm -hmm. not going to know exactly what you like unless you do it. You thought you liked chemistry. Right? Well, she does like chemistry. But she know, just doesn't you, want to but teach it. you thought it, it was going to be your life. Yeah. And then you're yeah. like, never mind. I tried that. Okay, cool. Unless you have some crazy uh, probably debt or something that I'm not aware of that you're trying to pay off or some some crazy like, you know, maybe you owe the mob some money that you need to get quick. Like <laughs> I think college, in general. The mob's giving out yeah, college yeah, loans. I, in yeah, general. I my university money, but. <laughs> yeah, screw them. No. Um, you know what I mean? Like unless there's like some crazy out, outside pressure to like, I need to make a ton of money right now, whatever that takes, then it's just like explore, man. Like figure it yeah. out. Like. Yeah, and like, let's keep our fingers crossed that Grandpapa Biden forgives all the student debt. <laughs> yes, that'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be really nice. Please, Grandpapa. Yeah. 
so yeah, that's all I would say is like take the pressure off yourself and to just release yourself to like go and do. And like failure is going to happen and like that's the beautiful thing of it. Yeah, yeah. and you also know? I think an important thing is we um it's weird how we're like so afraid of failure, but then we read, we can read stories or watch movies about people who embrace failure and be like, wow, like if only I were so brave. And it's very easy to be brave enough to fail. Mm. But I, I, th- I think it's like, it's easy once you start, but I think we forget like how important that learning lesson is. And as someone who wanted to be a teacher, I'm sure you can resonate in those pep talks that people have to give their students of like, you don't learn by succeed. Like the most you learn isn't by getting it right the first try mm-hmm, mm-hmm. science. I mean, you know, chemistry, the history, it's about learning from failure. The idea is to fail repeatedly to find truth. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be afraid to get out and go fail at things. Yeah. Listen, and we don't know anything. Easier said than done though. <laughs> it is exactly. easier said than done. So but look take- at Evan gave up his college thing to go into creative stuff and he's making a living in music. And I should have done it earlier, which is like because- super rolling the dice. But, and I, and I should have done it earlier because I was doing things that I should have done. Hey, take it from Ember. I took Ember ice skating. She was, she is the least athletic person on planet earth, right? She was going to hate it. Everything <laughs> thing, but she tried it and then she tried it again, started getting the hang of it, realizing, oh my God, I love this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I so was something. Ice queen. Skater growing up for like She's 15 an, years. Really? I was no. a hockey player. I was I a hockey you, player. I saw you posted that, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, so cute!" Wait, what's the ice skating movie about? The girl, the Disney ice skating. Do you know what I'm talking about? Ice Princess. Yes, I think Ice Princess. <laughs> you should show her Ice Princess. And is one of the Princess it. Diaries? Is she like in love with ice skating or something? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I feel like I've seen them about there. I used to. I when I was a little kid, I had a crush on Michelle Kwan. Mm. And I read her bio. I read her autobiography. <laughs> there you go. Things you don't know, you know. Yeah. But from I was the, Rick, the female, Rick I, Rubin, female figure skating when I was like, uh, yeah, you're eight. a thing, huh? <laughs> you're like, can we watch that princess movie again? Yes, dude. I was the Winter Olympics have never been so enthralling. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is about the winter time. No, but yeah, I mean, you seem like someone who's really conscientious and someone who's very aware and probably like an empath who like takes on a lot. And I think like from the famous words of Rick Rubin, the famous, famous uh, producer says, think less, do more. And someone like you probably need to, some people need to think more, but you seem (laughs) like someone who thinks a lot and probably just needs to get out of your own head, you know, stop being your own hater and just go try things. Let your opinion exist. Yeah. There is no wrong. Those there are some is some wise yeah. words. Thank you. <laughs> we tried. That was our that was our wise moment. Now we can be dumbasses for the rest of the episode. Yeah, that was all and let the drink, and now we can let the vodka talk. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been catching up with this season? Are you following? I'm the worst because I haven't watched either. Is it two episodes have been out? This is the third. There's three. been three. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't um, watched this season yet, but I've been listening to like your guys' episodes a little bit. You still. have a life? What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really don't. It's like, there's nobody up here. Like, it's just me, but. <laughs> Are you all, is it like The Shining? <laughs> no. She's like, she's like, I'm at this camp, but it's just her. <laughs> Yeah, and just me and all my friends. But I have all these snowmen I built. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, she we turn around. Oh my god, could you imagine? Grace seems like this super normal person, and then she just Dude, turns around. She's so like, say so all the campers, and they're all cutouts. And we're like, Grace, we so gotta go. Scary. <laughs> she's like, just killed everyone Thank at the you camp. So much. It was really nice talking to you. We wish you the best. Actually, don't think. Think more. Do less. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Call the police immediately. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of feels like that sometimes. Really? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Well, this is really you. fun to have I you really on. I appreciate it. Nice talking to you. We wish you nice. the absolute best. Uh, Thank you send so us a much. DM when you're like running for office or something or, you know, changing the world. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Cool. Adios. <laughs> See ya. Adios. See ya. Bye. <laughs> okay, broads, interrupting the bros for a moment and our wonderful broad grace uh listen i love wearing activewear as much as the next person but the past year my activewear drawer was in need of a bit of a refresh which kind of turned out to be a good thing because it led me to discover my favorite brand of all time girlfriend collective hands down we love girlfriend collective here at chatty broads and i feel like we know our stuff when it comes to leggings right because when i'm at home looking to relax and be cozy you already know i'm reaching for a pair of leggings and i've tried 
so many brands, but let me tell you, nothing compares to Girlfriend Collective. They make cute and comfortable bras, leggings, shorts. I love their shorts. Uh, tanks, tees, and so much more. Also, one of my favorite purchases from them was their best-selling legging, which is squat-proof, comes with pockets, and has a different level of support. Uh, different levels of support. So whether you need compression or softness, your perfect pair awaits you. I am guilty of throwing on a pair of leggings at all times of the day for any occasion, which is one of the reasons I love Girlfriend Collective so much. The pieces are good for whatever your day holds. Their crop tops are, are perfect under a cute jacket or a pair of their leggings with a cozy sweater. And just like that, you have a complete outfit and to make it even better. It gets even better. Girlfriend Collective pieces are made using recycled plastic water bottles, so they're cute, comfy, and environmentally friendly. For listeners of the show, Girlfriend Collective is offering $25 off your purchase of $100 or more. It's a great deal. When you go to girlfriend.com slash chatty, that's $25 off $100 or more. When you go to girlfriend.com slash chatty, that's girlfriend.com dot com slash chatty. Okay, not that I'm speaking from experience here, but if you've ever taken a weed edible, you know they can be a bit tricky. <clears throat> not me two months ago, absolutely spiraling. <laughs> you know, you eat that one brownie and the next thing you're on an entirely different planet. Not what I was looking for. I just wanted to find a way to get just the right amount of high, not too much, but not too little either. Broads, you know I'm new to this game and I was just looking for that perfect high and I found it with Diet Smoke's Delta 8 THC gummies. The only real difference between Delta 8 THC and regular THC is that Delta 8 is less potent but still gives you the same effects, just less intense. Um, with Diet Smoke's gummies, you have all the right ingredients for an amazing high, but none of the bad stuff. No anxiety. No paranoia, nothing. Thank goodness. I love to take my diet smoke gummies anytime I want to feel good, but not too good. You know what I'm saying. It's the perfect balanced high every time. Each gummy is infused with 10 milligrams of Delta 8 THC. It's low in sugar and a whole lot less expensive than your regular old dispensaries. Uh, the gummies come in two flavors, raspberry and watermelon. And honestly, they're both amazing. When CBD isn't enough and old-fashioned THC is too much, enjoy the smooth, smooth buzz of Diet Smoke. Right now, Diet Smoke is offering our listeners a fantastic deal. When you go to dietsmoke.com and use promo code CHATTY, you'll get 20% off your entire order. That's dietsmoke.com, promo code CHATTY to get 20% off. Go to dietsmoke.com, promo code CHATTY for 20% off their delicious gummies. All right. Well, thank you, Grace, for joining us. Truly, truly nice. It was nice. Wonderful to get, person. It was nice to reconnect with our spiritual sides, too. It was. I felt, I yeah, felt the girls I was, should be proud. I was buzzing a little bit. And I feel like my, uh, you know, this between this therapy, this tarot, I'm, things are lightning. I'm starting to float. Say something about that. I've just been delaying all my therapy. I keep canceling. <laughs> it's just, it's just, well, it always comes back to this. Well, I don't want to waste his time. Wrong? You're like, dude, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're good, right? And I'm he takes fine. one look at you and goes, you're good. You're, the, you're my first client in 50 years that you, I've never seen it. Nothing wrong. That's what every therapist has ever said to me. It's always <laughs> everyone else is what's wrong <laughs> they with go, me. They go, why'd your mom send you here? Like, I don't know. They're like, yeah, no, they're get your like, mom in here. They're, though, they're literally like, it sounds like your mom just needs to chill out. Right, right. That's what I say, dude. And, and it's just because you paid the therapist more to say that. Completely. <laughs> you're like, you sold, you sold the therapist weed. And he's like, dude, I don't see the problem here, I man. literally, dude, my parents canceled the therapist when they were like, I honestly don't see what the big deal is. They were, they were like, your parents are making this big of a deal about you smoking weed. And I was like, I honestly don't get it. Some of my friends' parents smoke weed. Like, I think it's just super like, I don't think it makes sense. Granted, five years later, weed became fucking legal. Right. So it was sort of like, yeah. You were like a prophet, really. And now guess who smokes weed? My fucking mom. <laughs> so uh, I think I was right the whole time. And you carry that mentality into your whole life. They were just overreacting, dude. They just needed to chill out. <laughs> well, let's get into this episode. Dude, speaking of people who need to chill the Woo! fuck out. Everyone else needs to chill out and get off of my girl's back, dude. They're all bullying <laughs> Shanae. That's all I have to say. Shanae. Well, let's start from the top. Okay, go. Cassidy. <laughs> so Cassidy gets called in. Dude, who, who looks like the puppet master in the previous episode. Yes. 
So she gets called in because she gets called out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but really, let's not forget, she called herself out to Serena. Now, Serena, yeah, so classic move, right? Everyone does this at some point. They just like are talking and not thinking about the fact that the cameras or the audio because is Because she's on. got too many drinks and she's too feeling drinks, confident. So she tells Serena, hey, you know, I got this guy that I'm hooking up with, blah, blah, blah. Serena brings it to the attention. Then that was where the, the episode left off. So we start off with Cassie getting called in, uh, you know, with Clayton to talk about this. And she tries to deny it. He goes, um, I'm under this impression that you were kind of in a relationship or you were seeing someone. And she goes, I haven't spoken to anyone since like 2019 that I'm interested in having a relationship with. Which is the slickest way of saying like, I don't want to marry this guy, but I'm fucking him kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like she didn't, she didn't, she wouldn't at first, she wouldn't have just admit to like, yeah, I've been seeing this guy. She kind of was like, I haven't spoken to anyone that I went in a relationship with. And he's kind of going like, I'm not asking about the, wait, no, maybe I he's, am. Like he's, he's being a little bit tactful, which I have to give Clayton a little bit. There are points. I have to give him a lot of credit for this. There were points where it was like, he's, he's really doing a good job yeah. of like, not saying too much on his end, but he's being tactful about being like, so I heard there's just some guy you're casually fucking at home. Well, then he kind of, he kind of like pushes more. And then, and then she did the classic, like, uh, well, um, he didn't want a relationship. And that was when it was like, you saw, that's when he got up. Cause she was like, well, you know, I was with this guy, I, you know, I was, I was like hanging out with this guy mm -hmm. and he didn't want the relationship to go any further. And so I was going to go on the show and he was cool with it. He was supportive. He was yeah. supportive. And if and it, it was kind of like, when I get back, we can still like be friends and stuff. Like if it doesn't work <laughs> it out. It's like, what if it is that? Like just admit. But what was amazing too was like the, the switch on that was like, I haven't spoken to anyone I wanted a relationship with. And then she turns it into, he didn't want the relationship. Which is the, which is the ding, ding, ding for yeah. him going, oh, okay. I this see what is happened. like, she's seeing like the white, of just like synapses just popping because on the side because of her brain. Sierra had said she was going on the show to make him jealous, mm. and that was the linchpin. You know what I mean? That was the 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 kicker because she goes, well, he didn't want to be in a relationship, and that confirms what Sierra was saying, which is she went on here to make him jealous. Now here's what was awesome. So she kind of just goes, well, we could hang out. I'm hanging out with this guy, blah blah, and then Clayton can smell it. He can smell, so he walks away. She panics and then she just goes straight up honesty. She goes, I've been hooking up with this guy the whole time for the past couple of months and I decided to come on the show. And that's when he just goes, my favorite was she panics, right? So she just goes full honesty. And then she says, yeah, I've been hooking up with this guy. And then Clayton goes, well, thanks for telling me. And she goes, yeah, well, okay, you're welcome. And then she kisses him like everything's fine now. And he's like, no, 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 you're out of here. I just it was saying like, thanks for telling me the truth. You know what I mean? Like she almost did this kind of like really sad, like, like glad mm, that's behind yeah, us. Like, oh, I'm glad we're, we're moved on. Right. Like, and it was just like, no, 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 you're gone, dude. Oh. Which, which is wild to think because to, to think that she brought herself down with just the, the talking, if she wouldn't have done that, Dude, she, she was in a of, great she was position. In a, she was in a solid position. Well, I want to talk um, about a couple of the people real quick. Okay. So we had the the date with Caitlin. Yes. Um, I mean, it was just, it was pretty wild to oh, jump Caitlin, in that Yeah, no, deep. Caitlin's group date where that everybody was the one started where just like admitting, admitting like really hardcore stuff about themselves. So that was heavy. That was really heavy. Who's the girl who was talking about her boyfriend making her change her eye color oh and her hair color? Oh my God, that was really heavy. And I really resonated with Clayton on that side when he's just like, dude, I'm like physically, Furious. he was like physically angry. It was, was like Hunter. visceral. Hunter. Yeah. Hunter was saying like, yeah, my, he made me go to the gym and change my hair color and my eye color. And I'm like, whoa. And what she's saying about like, it just makes me feel like you're never enough. Oh where he was God. just like, you could really tell that Clayton's like, whatever, whatever girl is going to be with him, he wants her to feel I mean, he just doesn't want her to ever have to ex ever have to have that kind of self doubt. Right. And it made me really. It was like the first moment where I really started to like him, when he was just like physically angered. He 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 that. really stood out for me this episode. I really liked him this episode. Yeah, same. Like he did a lot of things. That was one of them. Was his like empathy towards towards all the women in the room. He really mm -hmm. identified with all their issues and was like, "I'm so sorry you went through that. Like, I feel for you." You know, and it was like, "Oh man!" Like he wasn't putting on airs. You could tell it was like genuine reactions i remember at one point he said i want to learn more about it so that i can see your point of view and be there next to you and i was like seems like a guy that's trying to learn it's a good moment for him yeah it was good um uh let's see eliza got the rose 
Yeah, Eliza got the rose, and I liked her a lot. I don't know. Just has a really, like, energy to her that just made me feel like wifey vibes. You know what I mean? Like, not... I don't know. I, I really liked her. Um, but I do love... I love whenever he he's talking about one of the women, like, you know, she's beautiful inside and out. And I love that. It's like, that's a code for, like, I'm trying to not... Think just about focus the, on like, the physical here beauty. because I just want to yeah. jump your bones kind of vibe. You know what I mean? It's funny. Um, it's like a really sweet way of him being like, she's absolutely. He, by the way, he loves saying the word phenomenal. Mm -hmm. he, he says that word 300 times. Like, she's phenomenal inside and out. <laughs> um, then we had the Sarah date. Which is the one the on naked one. naked running. It's so stupid. Yeah. It, and it was like in LA too. And they were just running in downtown LA. It was a little bit of like, it reminded me of quarantine bachelorette where they were like just trying to come up with stuff well it's just like these like they're like oh let's have people's personalities come out by putting them in these awkward positions but it's also like imagine if you're like no i don't actually want to get undressed and run around a public space in my fucking underwear and that's where stuff where i'm like who's like it, it brought back to that one there's one date where they were like oh you're gonna play naked volleyball exactly and it's just hard it just reminds me of that of like not that, everyone's cool with that like let's just make them wildly uncomfortable by making them take all their clothes off on tv not uh, yeah it's not great it's, it's a little super weak. cheap yeah one thing i did love though was when they did the singing thing yeah how clayton just embraced it because she was smart she rapped that was she a did. really smart way. I was a little pissed about it because I really wanted to see her sing. Because I like I want people to like squirm. You know, I want you to be like so uncomfortable. You're like, and he went for it. Yeah. He's just like, and I saw you get out of the car. And I was like, you know what, man? I kind of was really starting <laughs> to turn around this guy. Like, I really like him. Like, he's embracing the awkward moments. He's not like trying to play it too cool. Like, I liked it. I did too. And I mean, like, um, I don't know. I mean, at the end of it, their dinner was nice. But ultimately, I thought the whole thing was pretty boring. I'm going to say, I'm going to be honest on that. I didn't think I like for whatever, like for the things that came out, I thought their chemistry was boring. I thought the whole thing, it mm. was like sort of like it was really safe and it was cutesy, but I don't see her going in the long run. I'll be honest. Like mm. I don't see the same kind of vibes I get from Teddy. Mm. So it was interesting. I felt the exact same way the whole date. Mm -hmm. I thought they just don't have it. You know, like there's just not that electricity. And even to the end, I didn't feel like it was, they didn't have like the real electric thing going on. But I will say this, Sarah is a bit of a sleeper to me. She's maybe not the most outspoken of the group. She's not the most like quick to just be like, hey, I'm here. Like some of the girls are. But by the end of the dinner, I was really starting to like really like her energy. She was very just mellow. Yeah. And she wasn't trying. She wasn't trying to force something. She just was in it. And she was just sitting there and she was talking about being adopted and she was talking about, you know, all the stuff that can come with that. And, you know, the hard, the hard time she's been through emotionally with all that. And I just felt like at the end of it, I thought, man, she's so effortless in her energy to where I actually really thought like I could see them being, if they had more time, really connect. She might not be the one that's like, I'm going to race to the front and play in the game. But like, she had a really great energy by like at the end of dinner, I was like, man, she's such a vibe. And then they made out and was pretty hot. And I was like, I think there's something to the make that. was hot. I will give him all his makeouts seem to be pretty hot. Yeah. He's probably a pretty good kisser. Right. But I, yeah, you know, you're, you're right. I think, I think there's something there, but I actually really liked her the whole time. I was kind of like, oh, they got nothing here. Like, so you liked her. But by the very end, I thought, man, I don't know if he's going to pick her. I don't know if she has enough kind of outward you know, outspokenness to kind of survive in this environment, but left to their own devices, just normal dating. I could totally see it work out because she was just so like mellow and cool and sweet and kind of just laid back. And I was like, Oh, she's really like, I don't know. She grew on me as I, as the, as the date went on. It wasn't like at first though, during the running and all that stuff, I was like, Oh, this is like, they have no connection, but you know, some people like it takes a little bit of a minute, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, Okay. Let's get into it now. Thank you. <laughs> You're like, thank God. I'm so excited. So it started with... This was just magical. From this point on is when the episode became pure magic to me. It, well, I mean, you gotta love someone who's just losing their mind. Like, just 
truly losing oh this is someone who's like i I was literally watching it and being like i don't know if i should dm her like i just kind of want to start a war with her on instagram and be like did you like completely forget that this is all gonna be on like we're all gonna watch you say what you said and do what you did and then own it like it was like the you're the most badass person in the world for like everything that you're doing like the way she be what what truly makes her like so uh, it's just like it's so juicy yeah is her behavior in the one-on-ones right her like little behind the scenes interviews where she like says how she feels about her own behavior that's the most <clears throat> insane shit to me of the whole thing is the like like what is your reality well it starts with the shrimp which is just right ex- so she's already just kind of like <clears throat> the doing shrimp count where she ate do? well she ate, she ate all the shrimp she right ate over half of it she ate like everybody's shrimp so it's like a group shrimp and she ate like half of the shrimp that but was like meant for 10 more people she right? even says it where she's like there's <clears throat> right, only like, like 15 shrimp like, in there and i have like whatever like, i don't fuck care all that. yeah right but in general the villains are like kind of unaware of how crazy they are and they're just kind of like, I don't care if you hate me, hate it, fuck you. But they're, they're kind of stone cold about it. And they're not emotional about it. They're just kind of like, and then when something happens to them, they're like shocked and crying. Because they're like, they think they're just in the right when they're doing all this messed up shit, right? Even Cassidy is just kind of like, wait, what? Why are you leaving? What happened? Why you, you hate me? And then she's leaving and she's crying. Shanae is one of the few that I've ever seen that is like, I'm in it for the game right away and i'm literally like playing this game and i don't care what anyone says fuck all y'all i'm like gonna win this game and it's interesting because it's like it's it's significantly more evil because she does a lot of things along the way that are like intentionally really messed up just to hurt people as opposed to like other villains are more like i'm that's my man or that's my woman and I don't care who I bulldoze in the way to get to him where she's like not even really interested in Clayton. She's more interested in like burning everyone's life to the ground. <laughs> I don't even know what it even is. Even on the shrimp. Level, like I'm going to steal everybody's the... shrimp just because fuck you. It's, it's more mal intent where usually it's like a villain would eat all the shrimp and they don't even realize how wrong it is where she's like doing it intentionally. These are those moments where it's like, I just feel, I feel sorry for her in a certain way where I'm just like, you're so like, I am like, she, if I were to encounter her in real life, she would infuriate me to the point. Like it would like, I would like become unhinged in that way. You know, where it's like, she has chaos energy where it's like everywhere she goes just becomes chaotic and everyone's sanity just unravels because everything she's doing is just like, she's like the Bermuda triangle of like, you know, social, social, like just socializing where it's like, she's just breaking all the rules and all of it's unexplainable and she's completely unpredictable. Yes. And you think your ship's on course. And the next thing you know, it just like goes through some vortex black hole and you're no longer even in the ocean. You and, don't even know yeah. what's happening. Your just whole life is completely turned upside down. You're now suddenly being accused of bullying someone when it's like, it's just, I don't know. And like the weird stuff to me is, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but what's weird to me is when she was in, when Clayton is having the interview with her and she's like, I'm not a liar mm-hmm. and I don't like do X, Y, and Z and everything she's saying she's not, it's all on camera of her doing doing it. Yeah. And that's the shit to me where I'm like, this is weird. Like, this is very weird because she, okay, but then this is the beauty of it is you think she believes what she's saying in that and then it cuts to her one-on-one and she's like, I totally got him. Like, what an amazing performance I just gave. He completely like she, believed and it, it. And it was, it was and psychotic because she's crying. But then she and flips all this it. Shit, and I'm like, Whoa. When he bites it and she sees him bite it, she's immediately just like, I, I just went like, oh, the house. And then she's like, but seriously, like, let's put all that behind us. Yeah. And then she's like, I know, like, it's so stupid, but like, let's just move on. And you're yeah, just so she's like. she's bawling and then all of a sudden good. Oh my God. And it was like, this is the weird moments with Clayton too, where I'm trying to like make sense of Clayton and like, where does he land in my interpretation of him of like everything leading up to that moment? I was like building respect for him, like having like, like, you know, be like, dude, like, yes, empathize, be compassionate, see these people say the right things. Like you're doing all of it. And then she just fools the fucking socks off him. 
that that's to the point where I'm like, bro, you cannot see that. Like, you don't see the performance and the fake tears in front of you. Like, we have all the backstory. He has none. Well, I understand that. He's just like this this girl who I kind of am having a major connection with is crying. Like, he's not in the house. He's not seeing the ITM. She wasn't crying. She's wearing makeup. It's incredibly obvious to tell if she's actually crying or not. I think tears were going down. No, dude. She's just doing the cry voice and she was just going like this. Right. But dude, I'm telling you, like, if you don't expect someone to foul play, you know, we're all like watching it. And so we're analyzing tears. But if someone's just like, I don't just, you're just like believing they're crying. Well, the other thing was, what was interesting is she's so soft in her and when he's questioning her her whole demeanor and her language is really soft and like she totally plays up the victim role Mm -hmm. and i don't know why i'm she even said i've been victimized i'm afraid to be victimized the other girl started cursing she started getting like super angry elizabeth having to be put a little bit more like she was that person it made her start to look unhinged yes which, which is like, which she is because she's in the, in the twilight but zone But she's right not now. even unhinged. I would say this. Elizabeth no, is so, I would have been 10 times more unhinged. When Think how unhinged you'd be if you've had three or four conversations with someone oh, you're trying to connect with and half of them, are you trying to defend yourself against a psychopath? Second, like imagine, imagine you have one conversation that goes really well. Then your second conversation is you trying to, your whole conversation is you trying to defend yourself. Then a week later, you finally get a moment and the person goes, Hey, are you still beefing with her? We need to talk about, I mean, you're so stressed. You've been waiting for this moment. You finally get it. And then it's about that person again. Like, dude, I would fly These off. These are situations where it's like, do you, I mean, this is, God, it just makes me be like, these are moments where it's like, I would, I wish not even I wish it would just be like if this was happening to me I would just want to hit that person so hard that's what I was saying it was like but she handled it so well remember even when Elizabeth was in the group talking about how they had been uh you know she had been accused of this again and then she was just and then and then Shanae walks in the room and she just kind of rolled her eyes at her like she didn't even attack her right away and even when they were fighting she just was kind of like well well she was just handling it so well I'm like dude I would have been screaming at her yeah screaming <laughs> i wouldn't have been able to handle it no but then you look like the person that is out of control so she probably knew that like i, I don't even care i'd together. be like let it all go to the t- let it all go to the freaking tell all dude that let's was let's go insane. at this and throw fists again it'd be like should get ready to catch these hands what was so crazy um that and, was and, oh so, so yeah she's doing the whole thing right wait okay back mm-hmm. to the shrimp I know we're going to bounce yeah. all around. Back to the most insane part of the shrimp thing was that she goes, oh, she wants to talk about shrimp. Like she's the only one who can make shrimp. Like it's not even about that. No, and then she makes not. everyone shrimp and then gets butt hurt. <laughs> that she nobody made people shrimp and no one, no one wanted her shrimp because it's like, dude, what is your self-awareness? It has that nothing like, to do, do with the you shrimp. Do you not see? Like, no, it's obviously that she doesn't see. It's like you made... It's just so sad in these ways where that's like, that's why I'm like, I do feel sorry for her in this way. Like you clearly don't understand. No, but I disagree. It was intentional, dude. It was intentional. She took the shrimp because she was like, big deal. I took more shrimp. Big deal. Like her thing was, fuck these girls. I'm going to take their shrimp. The reason why she made them shrimp again was because then she started feeling really alienated again. And mm-hmm. then she was like, um, well, watch, I'll be the, I'll be the savior now. It allows her to then later on go, well, I made you guys all shrimp and you still didn't take it completely so it's like the ultimate card and her the move like, the move one girl i forget who it has called it out first where she where um uh she was like well she talked she talked to him first that's where you messed up that was up. the key yes she, well, elizabeth said if i would have been able to talk to him first i would have been able to clear totally but another girl told elizabeth the whole reason this yes, is happening is because she got to him yeah. before you mm-hmm. and told him all this stuff and then remember when Elizabeth comes back to the group and she's talking about and then all of a sudden Lindsay walks back and Lindsay goes I just spent the whole time they're defending like, myself like for cry. bullying Shanae and they're like wait what what so then Shanae had the balls she sits to go there to, like, so to hit multiple people yeah so that she wasn't like this is another new villain thing where she's like hitting having multiple people in her crosshairs dude it's really it's making wild for, she's the savior of the season i'm just gonna say that wild. she's like the savior of the franchise but it's those moments where it's like this is what makes the show so good is the sad part of like it's just loving to hate somebody you mm. have to have you someone need, to hate on the, these the, shows the, you need the, the, the yeah 
I literally like I will use that strong word. I hate her as I watch <laughs> right. her on this. And that's the only entertaining part. What's also crazy to me is that she is maybe the first one of the first ever like people that actually doesn't have any point to her rage against none. So she goes, so she has the conversation jealousy, with dude. Elizabeth. Jealousy and insecurity. And she goes, that was it. Well, like you don't even talk to me. Like that's the no, reason why she's, she's trying grasping. to destroy her. No, she's grasping. She saw Elizabeth winning and she goes, this is a competition. Am I just going to stand by the sidelines and lose? No. She's like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win and make sure that you lose. So she saw Elizabeth making headway and immediately walked in and said that Elizabeth was bullying her and is two-faced and a liar and not here for the right reasons. And she had absolutely no substantial claim to any of it. No evidence. Elizabeth has done nothing to be no, two-faced, a liar of this, nothing. Now, here's what's interesting, though. Here's what's interesting. And the, one of the girls pointed this out where she's like, we're not bullying her. We just don't like her. And that's what's weird about these forced situations, like being at camp, where someone who isn't normally being a bully, like yeah. there's, there, I, I remember this in sleepaway camps, where they were just kids that were like legitly, legitimately unlikable. Right, they, right. Like, like nothing did they could do. Nothing. Like it was just like from the moment that they got there, I don't know how it's even possible to just be like, were you just like trained and turning an entire room of people against you? Right. Even your counselors to the point where like no one there not even the adults has sympathy for like a 13 year old kid and will just sit by and watch literally everyone turn their back on them right. to the point where like, yes, that is bullying. That's ostracizing someone. But it's also like this weird thing where it's like, well, if they're intent, if they're doing it, if they're going out of their way to make sure everyone fucking hates them, like, is it bullying? Like, I don't know. And well, these are these weird... But no, but no, no, okay. Oh, but someone said because this. I want to say it was cold. Sarah. Everyone is giving her the cold shoulder because she deserves... A, like, because she's behaving in a way where it's like, why would anyone go out of their way to talk to you? But there was clarity on this. Sierra, I believe, is the person that said this. She goes, we're not bullying you. We just don't like you. That's and there's a difference. I know that, but when... No, he, but what I'm saying is, so it's like... It doesn't... Like, the, the point is, it is not bullying if no one likes you it's bullying if they do mean things to you right so you don't have to be forced to like anybody you don't like so if, if no. you were if every whole room doesn't like you it's bullying once they start doing bad things to you well, or that, things that hurt you well, intentionally they, that's why i'm just trying to bring it up though is right. because it's like this thing where she's like she's bullying the other girls but she's saying but i'm being bullied just because we're not best friends yeah but and then they're all united to be like no you are an untrustworthy right. mean rude bullyish person so none of us are going to talk to you you know what this feels like a little bit i feel like she's living out some sort of high school thing that happened to her where it was like this happened in high school and so she's got this like elizabeth is someone in high school to her that she thought she was gonna be friends with didn't work out all of elizabeth's friends the high school elizabeth weren't friends with her and instead of just being like, huh, well, I guess it didn't work out. Or what should I change about myself? That's being weird. She goes, fuck those girls. I'm going to create a horrible rumor about them to where blah, 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 slept with blah, blah, blah. And you know what I mean? Like all some, some sort of high school drama to like ruin their lives. It's like, if I can't be with them, I'm going to ruin them all. Yeah. But she's, she's also like denies reality. Like she's also oh, someone to me where like, I can <clears throat> predict this where it's like when this goes to the women tell all and she's forced to watch herself on TV she still won't believe it. She'll like yeah. find a way to deny that she ever said these things, behaved this way, or did these things. And she'll like convince herself of this and just continue <sighs> on her life. She doesn't look like someone who loses sleep over See, anything she says mm, or does. I think that's the classic villain mentality. I think Cassidy will feel a lot more like that. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. I think Shanae is, is vengeance. The villains normally just do it because they're like, I am who I am. Deal with it. Shanae is, this is all vengeance. Shanae, Shanae is not interested at all in Clayton, really. All she cares not about. Not at all. All she cares about is killing everyone she hates. She, Most villains are just interested in the, in, the, in the Bachelor Bachelorette and they don't care about anyone. So they don't care what happens to them. And so they leave a, a, a thing of dust. She's so blatant about her manipulation because it's all about every interview. Is, I hate Elizabeth. She I hate Elizabeth. Not how much I love Clayton. She scares me so much. Like I think once she gets Elizabeth off, then her like reason for being on the show is gone almost. I feel like she's everyone's worst nightmare going into a relationship. 
worse because you don't you don't know it You've and then no it shows idea. its head later dude and like talk about like manipulative and all these things like She's emotionally manipulated. Oh, Manipulation is like the chain. It's wild. And the what's wild is it's working. So it's like clearly she's like an, she is very good at it. And what's yeah. it's strange to me is where I'm like, the student becomes a master. It's like, how much do you think she just let Cassidy think that she was in charge, you know? When she's doing all these, but no, well, then again, mm. like, I don't know because she was doing it's like, what would Cassidy do? Cassidy's a real villain, a classic villain. She's a little bit more just like, I want my man and I don't care who I burn in the process, right? More classic. Sinead's a haphazard Where Cassidy villain. walks away just going like, I'm so sad that I lost, you know what I mean? She's less interested in everybody else. Where Sinead is like way more like a part of like, I'm trying to kill everyone <laughs> who hurt my feelings. Where she's not a real villain. She's a vindictive person who's mad at like... You know what I'm saying? There's way more rage going on. Dude, and the fact of like... Which is way okay. scarier. So I loved Gabby's rose, which I was really proud of him for giving to her. Yeah, because we didn't get to the beach date. No. This is where I do agree with like, this is where I get on the group date, the moment when Shanae ran up and did the hug jump and make out yeah. after her slow thing. Yeah. What pisses me off is that the other girls go out of... Like, now we're having this thing where the other girls are going to go out of their way to find reasons to hate Shanae. Where I'm like, Sinead, what she did in that situation is exactly what you do on this show. Like you should have done. That's every single one of them should have done exactly what she did. Well, that's probably what's making them crazy though. If someone you hate is doing the moves you should have done, I mean, it's going to drive you nuts. And then none of them feel like they can back it up, but really right. none of their performances were nearly as memorable as what she did. Right. And she's just like, you know, una una unashamedly asserting herself to him, which mm -hmm. he loves loves but he loves I think, it i think he's starting to find his style and his um preference in the women he doesn't like the women that are too quiet and he doesn't like the women that are too over the top he likes the middles so it's like he, he he's keeping shanae on and then the, the the women who are a little more quiet like the jills and, the, and like certain girls like that like they're like they're not getting in I but mean, then it's the girls in the middle that are getting the roses, the Gabbies, the uh, the Sarahs. Like these girls are getting roses. The middle of the Packers who kind of come like in. I don't like that you have your computer with you with all your notes. Well, I pulled up the names. It's very I keep hard. For, the names. I don't have it. I don't have these things to reference. But it's the girls who got all the roses. It's true. But I. I but then well, here's here's a moment from him that I really liked was when he was in the interview with the pilot girl, and. I didn't like this when she was like, she's being all cutesy and she's like, I oh, just feel like Rachel was like, yeah, she's like, I need some, just, I need some, I need some, all these girls um, are talking about whatever. And when he was like, yeah, when I was in your position, I realized that like a lot of people are just talking themselves up. Right. And it was that like, that was a good, I like that. That, that was comment. a great moment. And then I loved, this is where he demonstrated some tact where she was like, I just feel like we have such a unique relationship. And he's like, yes, because it was like, yeah, because you're you. Right. And they're all politically them. played the like, we yes, don't we do have, have a unique relationship. We don't. Yeah. Our relationship is different from everybody else's because everybody else's is with them. And <laughs> My me. relationship with everyone is different from everybody else's relationship. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like so funny to me of like how assured she felt from that when it was like, yeah, our relationship's different from. Anyway, I was just like, that. I don't know. And then I was, I was kind of mad at her in this moment because I was like, why are you behaving in this way when really like you're like the first things that made her stand out as like a favorite was like bro like you are a pilot you teach people how to fly planes you certainly don't i guarantee you yeah she does not teach people how to fly planes by being like oh i don't know how to, what's this thing called a joystick <laughs> it's like no dude you're a fucking flight instructor I just don't like that. And that's where I'm like, I get where you're saying with the other girl who's like, she's not doing anything. Right. She's just extremely chill and laid yeah. back and just effortless like yeah. Teddy. Sarah, it's like, yeah, that might just Teddy. be what me and you vibe on. Well, I mean, I, it's also always hard to know with these shows, right? Because we don't, they just show you what we want to see. <clears throat> well, totally. So like what I'm guessing what happened with Rachel is a little bit what happened with Teddy, which is like Teddy and Rachel we're like the first episode and a half, like by far the clear front runners. And then all of a sudden we don't see anything from them for the last episode and a half. So it could be a little bit to where they're like feeling a little in their head about it, where it's like, Oh my God, we got so much validation. We were like making out 20 times. They were telling me how much he likes us. Then all of a sudden I haven't seen him in a week and he hasn't even looked at my way. So now I'm kind of freaking out. So cause, she, cause Teddy said a very similar thing. 
in the I think it was the beginning of the second episode or something. She went up to him and she's like, "Hey, I just like feel like I want to know where we're at." Yeah, but she didn't so do I, it. I, maybe not in the same way, but I, it's interesting that the two girls who seem to be the absolute front runners in this episode are kind of going, "Hey, um, like, is everything okay? Like, do you like me still? You know what I mean? Because it was probably like I got a ton of attention. I thought I had this thing in the bag. Now all of a sudden we haven't talked. Like, well, it's what's a, that, that's a mind fuck? It would have to be one of the more difficult parts about being a contestant on the show, right? Is just that like being in the in, being in the spotlight and then being immediately out of it. And not realizing that he's like, great, that's been taken care of. Right. And they just have to like compartmentalize all of it yeah, because they don't get to yeah. compartmentalize their relationship. Yeah, it would be weird to be like, let's say Sarah, who went on this long date, got the rose, had an amazing connection, and then just like most likely won't hear from him for a week. Mm -hmm. And just five other one-on-ones happen and you're like, I thought that went amazing. I think it did. I don't know. So yeah, that that is a, it's like, it's almost better to like get, yeah, as you go in the show be in the middle of the pack and then grow towards the front, then be the front runner in the beginning because you can kind of get lost. You just a have to bit. be like stalwart and just be like so strong willed to make it through that and be mm -hmm. like, I think it's also remembering like the way that you make headway with the, with the bachelor, the bachelorette is to keep putting the attention on them yeah, and making sure that they're good through the process and not make them constantly reassert like how you are mm. because that's what they're having to do endlessly with everybody else and it's like to me and i would get really tired of that where it's like i just want someone who'd be like secure enough in our situation where like i can just sit down with them and have fun and they make like you know giving that person comfort by making them just like have fun with the process instead of being like hey like i just really need you to like like, I know that you just gave that girl some reassurance, but like, now I really need that reassurance. Like, I need it doubly more so because I just saw you give it to her. As opposed to being able to just be like, okay, like, the easy thing is to talk about me. Mm. The hard thing is to be like, let's talk about you. And really, like, how much have we seen Clayton talk about himself? Almost zero. Almost zero. I know nothing about him, basically. So that's where I'm also like, everyone just seems to be like, in my mind, like they're just like talking about who they are right. and all this, which is like, I know he asked those questions, but it's like, especially in the cocktail parties, it's like, this is the moment to be like, let's get him to open up. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like, to, I, I'm not seeing much that makes me feel. It is funny though. You know, it is fun. I do. I like just on the side, I always just kind of laugh at like whenever so like the fact that every contestant of every season in the last 900 seasons of the show without failure goes, you know, I um, have a really hard time opening up about all this stuff, but um, here's a bunch of personal information on our first date. Isn't it funny how every single person says the same thing? No one ever goes, I'm an open book. There was like, I just, um, I can never talk about this, but uh, I'm going to talk I'm, about it for the first time on public TV. I'm going to talk about it right now. And I, I usually never open up. And, and I just, I never talk about myself ever. But here's the next hour. <laughs> Isn't it funny? You've never seen someone just be like, anything you want to ask me? What's up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really open. Anything you want to say? It is funny. Dude. Like every single person on every date and every group date, whatever it is, it's just like, I just, ooh, um, mm, this is hard for me to say, but, uh, and just say, wait, you know what I mean? Isn't that weird? That's where, like, I would be, I don't know, I would be, like, really bad on these because I'd be, like, anything that felt rehearsed, I would just immediately be, like, okay. It'd be hard to know, like, at this point, like, I know you said that our last date, you said it's hard to open up, I know. And every other person I'm, I've had a date with. Or I'd just thing. be, like, is it, though? Like, you don't even know me. Why are you telling me? <laughs> right. I'd be, like, it's awkward for me to hear you say this. Like, I don't even know you. Like, we literally <laughs> just like met. I and this is my idea. first conversation and you're just telling me all about like the uh, the biggest source of trauma in your entire yeah. life. I'd just be like, it's hot. It's you know what? really fucking you know what hot we, you in know here right now. Tyler. Tyler. You know Tyler. Do you know Tyler? If he was the if he was the bachelor, he'd be like, um, if I'm just being honest with you, uh, this is like way too much too fast. Like, can we keep it light? Like, do you want to take the boat out? Yeah, they'd be like, oh my God, yeah. And they're like, wait, I was just telling you about like the most intense thing that happened in my life that changed me forever and how I can't open up anymore. And he's like, cool, cool, cool. I totally get that. But like, would you like another Bud Light? Would you like another Bud Light? And do you want to like, <laughs> instead of talking about that, would you, would you rather do like an 80s dance sequence right now with me? He's like, I've been going to salsa classes for like the last month just to like see what it's all about. And it's actually fire. And I, I, I totally hear you. Like the trauma's dope. 
trauma is fire but like this is a little bit more fire and i think we should dance like a lot of people bond over that but i think we should bond dancing and in our hokas because i'm a spokesperson for them by the way yeah so like here's here's a gift to you i hope they fit <laughs> and he looks at the camera and he's like boca and then <laughs> and then and then he turns back and he's like speaking of bond like did you play 007 when you were in high school and, they're, and they're like uh, it. what He'd be like, you DK mode with paintball? Like, you could, you could change the bullets to be paintballs. I just love the idea of him going on, like... They'd be in the map. You could play paintball. Dude, insane. I just love the idea of him being like, whoa, that was really heavy, ladies. Um, What is your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> I, like, I kind of love... Like, they need I to figure out a like, way. I love that we dilute Tyler to being this, like, very sophomoric, <laughs> like, teenager. Frat boy? That, yeah, but he's, like, a frat boy, but he's also, like, we, we've we talked about him being, like, in the Richie Rich bedroom or, like, yeah. in, um, you know, blank check. Yeah, where he's got, 100%. Like, this water slide going yeah. out of his bedroom window I into just... the... Out of him and Matt's window into their pool together. I just don't still see on him going on a date beds. and someone being, like, and, um... Well, a little bit about me, like, I was in a car accident last year, and he's just like, whoa. Have you met my best friend, Matt? <laughs> he's like, dude, I just thought we were going to hook up. Like, this all this, like, serious stuff about, like, car accident stuff, like, that's way too heavy, dude. I love, I will never, I can't ever get enough of your Tyler impersonation. He's like, oh. It's like, dude, honestly, um, New York City's fire. <laughs> like, so many, I don't know, I just, what I don't understand, dude, is, like, how this many people... It's like 10 Miamis, but like in a smaller place than Miami. And then like the whole northern part of the state is like a giant golf course. Yeah. So it's like, wait a second. So like, is New York City the state or is it like the city? Like, I still haven't sussed that out yet. Because like when mail comes to my address, it says it in New York like New 10 y- times. It's like New York, New York, New York, New York. Like, what is it? Like, where am I? Like, how am I a city and a state? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Miami's just chill as fuck. Like, I'm in Florida. It's I in Miami. It. Like, fuck. There's gators and stuff, but everyone also drinks, like, Four loco and shit, and it's fucking tight. I love that guy. Okay, hey, by now, the way, no also, hate, Tyler. Please come on the podcast. Um, well, great episode. I love where the season's going. I'm loving the energy. Oh, quick quick way to wrap this up. Question, what do you think is going to happen next week? My my estimate, he kicks uh, Elizabeth and Shanae off and just goes, like, this is too much drama. That's the safe bet. It's right. not what producers want. Yeah, because it's electric, right? I think so. Elizabeth goes. Shanae has to stay on. I don't want, like, yeah, look yeah. It, for yeah, this yeah. for our sake, I don't, I really don't want her to leave. Um, That's true. I mean, oh, yeah, I don't want her to leave. If she doesn't leave, like, I think she, what I'm hoping for is that she makes it through the next rose ceremony. Yeah. And that in and of itself causes some other girls to get fully unhinged Mm. because there's a few there's a few girls where like they feel the need to defend elizabeth to the point that they will take up her battle when (laughs) she's gone and never like they will never forgive shanae for the way that she's behaved and if shanae stays on it's going to become like a blood sport to just like prove to him that she is like not a good person or not to be trusted or whatever however they're going to define it but I think it would be a real shame to miss that opportunity by kicking them both off. Mm. And really like, let's be honest, this is the most compelling part of the season. It's not the, it's not the, the love, the burgeoning, blooming, the blossoming love that he's developing with these other people. It's the tension within the house. Mm. That's what the show is. The producers would be insanely foolish to let that go. Yeah. And it's not going to, Getting rid of Shanae is not the answer to that. Getting rid of Elizabeth is the answer to really fucking like... She's just like a level-headed person. So it's like if you get rid of her and you keep Shanae the victor, no, Shanae you is, light the whole house Shanae on is fire. Reality t- she is like cocaine for reality TV. She is just like... Th- She's that is, it. it's, it's amazing. She is a reality t- TV producer's wet dream. She's just yeah. coming on there and she's just pure. That's what I'm saying. She's a, chaos just energy. Just a basket case. She's bananas, dude. She's bonkers. Bonker town. And you do not know what she's going to do next. That's the thing. They don't have to. You see like producers are always constantly trying to create situations for people. Yeah. You don't need to do it. She just needs to wake up. 
She's unhinged too. She's about to like fight. Like she comes fists. in all like all buzzed from the pool. She's like, oh, fucking shrimp. Like, here we go. And she's right. just like, mm, 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 right. fucking <laughs> shrimp. And then she's just like, fuck all these hoes. Like, I got fucking eight. I'm going to have over <laughs> half the shrimp right here. And anytime and someone wins too, like, like Gabby, who's got no beef with her, she's just like, fucking Gabby gets they're the all, rose. And, and they're all like, complaining. What did Gabby do wrong? They're all complaining about how there's no shrimp. And meanwhile, you literally see her off screen just. Like licking she's her mouthing fingers. them in, and she's cleaning her mouth, and she's like, "But honestly, though, like, fuck all those girls, like, yeah, and I'm gonna eat all their shrimp anyway." And just like, also watch this, and, and she says, "Fuck in. all those girls," and then later on goes like, "Why won't you guys talk to me?" It's like, I mean, you're a tyrant. Dude. It's <laughs> incredible, and I'm here it's for it. I absolutely love her. That's what I'm saying. Everyone's, bu- everyone is bullying her, and they're all against her. And Not I'm just bullying. Like, they just don't like her. They just don't. That's the like that's the her. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think the episode's fire. I think it's going to be a dope season. Um, let's open a couple. Open up yes. a couple. Plug something. Yes. Packages. Plug something. something. Plug something. Plug. Open up a package. Plug something. Plug something. We See need, what's we inside. Need a, we need, See what's inside. <laughs> See what's inside with plug something. We what's need to in, like make a make a song for this. Well, we can just do. We could also do the segue to just um. Uh, what's it? Uh, why am I blanking on him right now? But the what's in the box? You never seen seven? Dig in a box. What's a dick in a box? <laughs> Have you seen seven though? Yeah. Brad Pitt oh, and Morgan Freeman. His wife's when head's like, in the box. What's in the box? We should put that as a drop. Yeah. What's in the box? I'll put I'll get that together. He's going crazy. He's like, just tell me what's in the box. <laughs> That'll be an awesome little like little like uh Boom. drop. It's like Boom. what's in the box? Boom. All right, here we go. What what? What's in the box? I love how annoying those radio broadcast things are. All right. Chatty Bros from Lawrence RS. What's RS? I, um. <laughs> what is that? KS Kansas? Lawrence can Yeah, I guess. Maybe? Doesn't matter. Is right, there a go. state that's RS? I don't know. I don't think so. Road, no. That's I R-I. thought about that too. Let's see here. All right. <clears throat> we got some seeming water bottles. Cantilever. Cantilever? Here we go. Cantilever. Some gorgeous water bottles here with some cool... I got, I got some flies on mine. Check it out. Cantilever. It's got a... Uh, you just got a cool snake on it kind of a desert desert vibes all right here we go says evan and grayston i am a longtime fan of the chatty broads and bros my favorite days of the week uh are episode release days those two water bottles are for becca and jess to use when they peloton but i would love a plug by the bros first as a cyclist raised to love art on weekend trips to the museum, I have brought my two favorite things together through my new brand, Cantilever. Our flagship products are cycling water bottles printed with illustrations by artists. From you making that sound is insane. <laughs> Uh, across the U.S., they are perfect for Peloton workouts, cruises along the oceanfront, or bike rides in the mountains. Check out our IG at Call It Cantilever to see more. Enjoy, Marianne. So, well, I'm not giving these to the broads. No, definitely these are not. ours. So, sorry you, about that. The, you know, it's really fun. Yeah, that's how you drink out of these. Yeah, you're not supposed to do like. No, 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 you never. No, it's. it's, it's you know what this is called? You do this. You go. Ah! This is uh, it's like hockey because so when we were young, what? we had the cages over our face. You uh-huh. can't put them on your mouth. So you have to go. You have to get really good at it. Watch hockey players. They are just like they can go from here, not even looking at it. They go right. Well, in their that's what's tight. Do you got to go like ah? Just yep. Got got got. Um, we're not giving these to brothers. These are ours. They're also. Let me, let me be very clear. Anything that comes to us, we take and we have first dibs on. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, will not be passing these on. If we we will be stealing these. You know, ours. the other thing is, is this isn't even about the the beauty, the magic that happens in these water bottles is it turns water into a source of hydration. Every other water bottle, you have to get hydrated by actually drinking the water. Yeah. These is just about hitting yourself. Right. This is. Yeah, it gets as like long if you get seventy percent of it in your mouth, it's just it, it makes because your pores are open when you're sweating, so you can get hydrated through that. And that's you just science. Spray it. You're just like. Ah. That's science, and that's yeah. been backed up. 
Yeah. Ah, and then if you want to look hot, you can kind of do the like, you know, all over wet t-shirt and then contest get your friends. Bop, bop. Like you, get your, your coach, turn, baby. Your coach loves it when you coach spray them with it. water. Huge fan. Thank you for the water bottles. We okay, will definitely be using the these. I opened up. I just opened up retail package for the gym. And Maybe not. we will fill these with uh, vodka and juice and these will be our hydration packages along the way. All right. Next up. Grayston is opening. Where are we from right now? Whoa, okay, that thing is that. Well, no, no. Would you open that up in the amount of like particle dust that came no, out of that was very intense not a good start i know why you liked opening that one by the way it's from middleton massachusetts the font the f you liked the font on the front Tor it made you feel like something cool is going to be in it M massachusetts I do. the font the letters are moving really honestly fast. when i saw that i thought you're gonna like that you're gonna I love the way like you look the, i guarantee I don't it like the back i'm just gonna say that it's probably like oh my god the amount of fuck, shit cut what, what is fuck? that like insulation fuck, dude don't open the... Okay, no, 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 look it. The back has insulation. Don't I'm open... Sorry, I can't even see don't it, open dude. The, I keep getting it in my <laughs> eye. Oh, my God. There's so much... What? Oh, dude. It, you're... Dude, it, stop moving. I'm sorry! Stop moving. There's I'm so sorry. much shit. It's fucking... Stop what the moving hell the bag. is it? Holy shit. It's <laughs> packed <laughs> with... Stand inside your trash can if you order from this person. <laughs> when you wow. open the bag. The things are cool, though. <clears throat> Ooh. Oh, wow. these are mine. Those are so you. I do. That's why I that's gave you perfect. those ones. Dude, these worked out perfectly. These are cool. I actually really need some like. Look at this cool little doodle. These are rad, dude. These are so you. Okay. These are dude. These are actually really sick. Evan and Grayston. Hi. Hey. Hey. First of all, love the podcast and your level of realness when it comes to relationships, LARPing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I also love that you're using the platform <laughs> to help small business. Relationships, LARPing, etc. First et cetera, off, et I've LARPed once. I've LARPed so, once in my life. I think, I think you're really honest about the fact that you actually do that. That's really great. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? We have an, I have another bachelor party coming yeah. up that I'm planning, and we're doing Star Wars themed stuff because that's what my friend requested. Wow. Yeah. So I'm writing a whole Star Wars background. Which I can go into late next episode. Wow. Broads, tune in. Love it. Um, I graduated from art school in the middle of the pandemic. Not quite sure where to go next. After some research and many Zoom calls with my brother, our brand, Torborg Hardwin, was born. I wanted to start a clothing brand that, profit, that prioritized fun and self-expression, um, letting go of the ego that comes with the clothes we wear. But sustainability and repurposing is also a huge is is also huge for me. So I started making shorts from dead stock fabric, fabric that would otherwise sit in a warehouse or go to landfill. I support that. These bad boys can be worn for anything from walking the dog or your kid to surfing or just sitting at home. They are completely handmade by me and my studio. Wow. And the color styles and lengths can all be customized. I also make many one-of-a-kind garments made from repurposed fabric. Thank you again for starting this segment. And I hope you both enjoy the shorts. Plus, oh, plug or roast away. Whitney, IG, Torborg underscore Hardwin. Shop Torborg.us. Dude, honestly, these are fire. Look at, there's like a they blue line. Really you got like a really great look. That's perfect for you. This is definitely my style. The all black with a little with a little feature right here. Damn. They're definitely nice. Big fan. I, I like the mesh liners inside so the water will drain. So they actually are for water. Um, dude, yeah, this is great. This is crazy nice. I love knowing that it's like actually handmade. Dude, so it's I will super roast quality. you though. On it's I super, will the roast mesh you is nice on, too. Look, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you get when you're using like all recycled things. I'm dead serious, you guys. Open this bag outside. Love them. Thank you so much. Who? What was? What was the name? Torborg Hardwin. And then what was? What was it? Her name? Her name. Or what was? What was? I'm guessing it's a girl because her handwriting is really nice. Whitney. 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 Thank you so much. We loved it. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you, guys. These are both absolutely I awesome. I love this segment. I love it, too. I mean, it's free gifts. Are you kidding me? It's fantastic. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Thank you, guys. But also, we get to put people's, people's it's, presentations it's out awesome. there. It's awesome. We love you guys so much. We will see you next week for more beautiful... Oh, and merch is actually... It seems to it's be... Coming. It's coming. It's going. Stay tuned. So... It's going to be awesome. Valentine's Day. Chet It'll soon. be a special one. It's going to be fucking sick. Love you guys. Bye.